Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. It's so nice to see these familiar faces and to see some new ones as well. We're glad you joined us this morning. We know you're at choice of where you want to be, and we're so glad you chose to come and be with us today and share your light with us. So on the back table, we have some prayer request forms, and we love to pray here. So if you have anything that's heavy on your heart or anything you'd like us to celebrate with you, just fill out one of those prayer request forms, put it in the prayer box, and Reverend Yvonne and I will pray with you and for you all week. Also, last week I said there was a, uh, an address for our meditation on the back table, and they were gone, but they're back. So there's some little cards that have the address for our Zoom meditations that we do on Wednesday also on the back table. Additionally, there is a sheet of paper that says name tags on it. So if your name tag has disappeared or you've never had one and would like one, if you would put your name on that sheet of paper, I'll see that you have a name tag next week. And we want to be sure it's spelled correctly. So please print your name on that sheet of paper so I don't mess it up. Thank you very much. So... Um, for anyone who's here for the first time, there are some packets on the table in the foyer, and I suggest you would like to help yourself to one to find a little bit more about us. So that being said, I believe we have some special music this morning. <laughs>
Thank you. I so appreciate when they share their beautiful talent and their music with us on Sunday morning. Thank you. So it's that time in our service where we get to bless our children, the children of our congregation, the children of the world, and the child within each one of us. So I'd like to ask you now if you would join me in this prayer for our children. We see you, who you really are, made in the image and likeness of God. We cherish you, we support you, and we love you. And so in this place of love and oneness, let us move into prayer, knowing there is but one life. That life is God. That life is perfect knowing that that life is health and wholeness, love and compassion, beauty. That life is all there is. There is nowhere where God is not. And I am one with that divine and holy presence. And if that is true for me, that is true for each and every person here today one with the one, one with light and love and peace and joy, one with compassion, forgiveness and abundance. So as I speak my word this day, I speak it knowing truly that as we go forth this day and each day, we greet those we meet with love and acceptance and compassion. I know that our journey is strengthened and supported by that divine presence within each of us. I know that we move through this time with ease and with grace and with love. Love is the answer. And so I am grateful. I am grateful for the light and the love and the peace and the joy of spirit that fills us and spills forward. I am grateful for each person here today. I am grateful for the powerful presence of spirit which guides us. I simply say thank you as I release this word now to the perfect working of the perfect law, which always, always and only says yes. Please join me in affirming, and so it is. Amen. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Adi and Don and Jamila and Diane, thank you. Thank you so much. That was beautiful this morning. And what a great story. What a great idea that we are singing a new world into existence. Are we not? Yeah. Oh, some of us are singing the same old world into existence, but I mean, collectively, I believe that we are right there. We're right on the cusp of moving us into a new world, a new way of beingness, because we've had plenty of experience to show us that we are not, we are not satisfied and we are not happy with the way it has been. And that's just natural. We always want to move forward. We always want to move into a greater good. We always 
Well, most of the time, and most of us do, and we always have something to contribute to that. This new world that's being created, we know that absolutely nothing remains the same, does it? Nothing. doesn't matter what we're looking at. There's always change going on. So we come together because we it, um, together have this energy and this energetic intention to empower each other through the power of self divine to move the world into a higher, higher realm. Not just move it forward, but move it up and forward. Because there's lateral too, right? But we're looking at up and forward. We're looking um, at, excuse me, there's, the, I think I've only had two cups of coffee this morning and I actually needed four. That's what happened. <laughs> So good morning to everyone here. I'm so happy to be here with you. I get so inspired by music. Oh, man, I get inspired by music. And then the drum. Oh, don't you love the drum? The drum's going. The piano's playing. The, the guitar is being played. I could just listen to that, and that could be my Sunday service. It always is. It's so inspiring. It's so inspiring. So here's what we need to know, that something wonderful is happening through us right now. Something wonderful is happening through us right now. It's this thing called life. Life is in our mind. Life is in our body. And life is in all of our affairs, everything that we're doing. We think it. We feel it. We accept it, we believe it, and we are it. Life is happening to us, through us, and as us right now. Right now. So, are you happy? Yes. Yeah, yeah. If you're happy, you know you are. You also know if you're not happy. Yeah. And when we're happy, doesn't it just bubble up into you? You want to celebrate life. You don't want to just go along and, yeah, I'm happy and... Moving along in life. No, when we're happy and we feel it, we want to celebrate life and we want to know the joy of living. And we do this by recognizing God as creative principle, source, present. God as creative principle in life, as life, throughout all of life. And, and source, present. Meaning we are never, ever separated from source except in our minds, except in our stinking thinking. That's the only way to be separated from, from life and source. Yeah, yeah. So we want to be with it, this, this um, truth by recognizing God as being as self-evident through the life that we have. God is the self-evident truth that you are created out of itself in its image. So what's true about God is true about you. What's true about you has to be true about the universe. So be very aware of what you're saying about yourself. Be very aware. And the self is all of humanity, of course, you know. We're not separate. We're all connected. Like it or not, we're all relatives. Yeah. So we want to be aware of what we're saying because our, our um, words are so powerful. We have the power of life in our thoughts, our feelings, and our words. We, we have the power of life. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth, the truth of your beingness, and the truth will make you free. What do we all want? We all want the freedom to be who who and whose and what we are in our most magnificent way, whether it's laying on the couch and just eating gumdrops or whether it's out there building bridges or digging wells, whatever it is we, we want to do, if we can do it from the freedom, from the freedom of self-love and recognition, And knowing that we are here to be served and to serve. Mostly we hear about 
doing our service, but we're also here to be served. And every time, every time someone smiles at me, every time someone allows me to uh, in with my car, or every time I have an interaction uh, but with someone else, I'm being served by the God of that person, the Godness of that person. That's one way that I'm being served all of the time. So we must re. re remember this and when we remember it it gives me joy and when I'm feeling joyful I want to celebrate life more you see how that just absolutely snowballs upon itself and then of course joy has all those siblings happiness and creativity and generosity and forgiveness I mean we're talking how to live a full life out of the idea that we are a spark of the divine that makes me happy. So we want to, um, uh, the first thing we want to do, though, is what look at what it is that um, there are times when we're not happy, right? We want, we want to examine why, why and when we're not happy so that instead of it becoming a huge thing and greater thing, we will, we will ha um, move it into the less than, not as frequently, and not as powerful. You see what I'm saying? I, I feel like we all have something in our lives that when we think of it, it brings something up that's less than happiness. So let's look at that. But what we first have to do is the, the, the thing that we're always talking about. We're always talking about. It's not about how to change your family or how to change your friend or your partner or how to change the person down the block. It's always about what? Looking within. Looking within, looking to the source, looking to the power, and the power is within you, and the power is of you. So we want to look within, because that's a great place for us to um, explore what our beliefs and our thinking is. It's a good place, it's a great place for us, if we go within, to observe how we're responding and reacting to the world. And it's also a good place for us to have time to take self-reflection. So what's our purpose? Our purpose is to, to today to discover our process, the pro, how we process life, how we process what happens to us, how we process what we see, what we think. We want to be able to process, um, discover what our process is. And what is our process? It's the dominant attitude of your mind. What's the dominant attitude of your mind? Life is hard. That could be a dominant attitude. I really don't have anything to offer. That could be a prominent attitude. I'm, I'm way past an age where life really offers me what I'd like to have, and I'm settling for what I have got. That could be an attitude. There aren't any good men or women out there for all of us single men and women. That could be an attitude, a dominant attitude of mind. We want to look at what the dominant attitude of our mind is because this is what we know. If it's dominant, it's running us. It's running us. We are responding from those beliefs and from those thoughts and from those feelings that are that is the dominant attitude of our mind. So we want to find out what that is. Ernest Holmes said to us, he, he said, what we demonstrate today, tomorrow, and the next day is not as important, not as important as what it what our thought what our thought is taking otherwise uh, excuse me not as important as the tendency that our thought is taking so it's not what really is happening to us it's the thought we have about it the tendency from the thought we have about it that really affects us yeah and it's really clear to me when when I receive a diagnosis or someone's opinion about me, my thoughts run rampant. They may run really high if it's a really good thing, but they also are very, have a real tendency to run to the very worst if it doesn't sound so good to me. So you see, it wasn't the diagnosis, and it really wasn't some words spoken by another person that had an effect on me. It was a tendency that my mind took with those things. That's what happens to us. 
So you see, again, we can't blame the other. We have to go within. We have to look at ourselves and say, I am the power. I am, as I've said before, I'm not only the author, I'm the story. I'm the publisher, but best of all, I'm the editor of this thing called my life. I'm the editor. Yeah. So if you're happy, and you know what? This is wonderful. This is wonderful. And you know that little song? Of course, that little children's song pops up. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. And if you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. And if you're happy and you know it, shout it out. I love those because those are just... For children, they're just declaring. They're declaring what they're accepting in the moment that they're happy. And they're able to demonstrate then. From taking that idea in, they, they, they start demonstrating it by clapping hands, stamping feet, and shouting hooray, right? So they're participating in their happiness. They're participating in this, this idea of good and experience of good. And, of course, it makes them feel better. And you know how it is, even if we're happy to begin with and somebody shares a happiness with us or we discover it or however it comes out, it'll raise us even higher on the happiness scale. I mean, it really will. Our happiness meter goes up. The more the more joy that we experience, the more joy that's uh, around us, the, more, the higher we're lifted. So those are, that is something that um, we want to really appreciate Really appreciate. And you know how you appreciate this, the things that are happy and beautiful and joyous around us? You take a moment to experience them. We just need to take the moment. Take the moment. Now, we also know there's, um, we can't always be in a, st we aren't usually always in a state of happiness. And we're not always right there to, to celebrate life. And, and um, what I want to do is ask us today to look at, the times when we're not happy, just in that present moment, not happy. There's, there's a couple things you can look at. Number one is, what is the feeling you have? And what's the feeling you could have? What is the feeling you have and what is the feeling you could have? See, that's observing what you're feeling and then contemplating what you're feeling versus what you'd like to feel. Just that simple and that quick, you can ask yourself, okay, I'm feeling a little um, irritated right now. Now, here's what happens often. We're feeling irritated and we go down that road, down that slippery slope, and we just, even if we don't have an audience, we're going over in our mind what it is we're irritated with and how many times we've, we've experienced it with that person or that thing. And, we, and it just becomes this huge pot of non-productive energy that's sucking up your life, sucking it right into that pot. Now, if we ask ourselves, I'm irritated right now, and we ask ourselves, this is how I feel, what could I feel? Aren't we asking that question or putting that question into a field of infinite possibility? I could feel angry. I could feel disappointed. I could feel neutral. I could feel relaxed. I could feel disconnected. I could feel loving. You see, when we ask ourselves what we could feel, we're, we are allowing ourselves, putting ourselves into that field of choice. Again, who's responsible for the choices you make, the internal choices you make? Who is it? We are. We are. We're the only ones. We are the only ones responsible for those. So it's not about ignoring whatever it is in front of us that is bringing out feelings that are not happy, not joyful. But it's about uh, identifying it. We don't want to ignore it. We don't want to say, oh, I can't feel that. I must let go of that negative feeling. No, you don't have to let go of it. You identify it and you use it. Feelings have a, have a purpose. They tell us what is going on. Feeling frightened, that tells you something, right? And then you get to identify, what am I afraid of? 
What do I think I've lost? What do I think I won't have? What is it I think that's been done? What is it I think I should do? We get to ask our feelings what message it is. And you know what? If you're willing to listen to your inner voice speak to you, it speaks truth. You might even hear, I don't know. (laughs) And if you hear that, it's just asking for a little larger space. Because you see, we've had a lifetime of packing one thing on top of another. We've had a lifetime of discounting true feelings within us. Maybe it's just been a few times for you. For some of us, it's been many, many times. But packing one unresolved feeling, unacknowledged feeling, on appreciated feeling on top of the other because we've had good feelings too that that somehow we took something in that discounted them i'm sure everyone's had that once in a while how about the child oh my goodness i think of of a child that once was in my care that um, brought me something and and it was a picture and it was so so beautiful in the sense of there was a fish in the picture and there was a sun in the picture and there was, um, I can't remember, grass and something else, but it was the fish that caught my eye. And instead of letting the child explain to me, you know, how the fish could be flying around here, I said, where's the water? That's what the child did. You know, an innocent, beautiful child. And on my part, You know, when we make mistakes, you can call them sin, you can call them whatever you want. It's out of ignorance. Mine was out of ignorance. Now I know better. Now I I do better. Because when I know better, I do better. That wasn't such a good one. But, you know, we move on. But you see, we get to look at, we get to look at what it is that we're, what we're calling not um, a, a problem. And then there's, when we have a problem and, and we keep seeing it reoccurring in our lives, we get to look at, do we have an emotional attachment to it? Is it working in some way for us? Is it getting us um, a lot of attention? Does it help us justify a behavior on our part that wouldn't be justified if we didn't have a reason to act like that? Does it keep us um, emotionally safe, we think? Do, do we think it keeps us from being vulnerable by holding on to the problem? You know, we get to look at it, and it's never, ever to point the finger. It's to point love towards whatever it is we're experiencing. That's all it is. It's to point love towards it so that we can move through it. We can move up, and we can move out of that place of of being caught by that old energy because so much of the time that old stuff that's going on belongs in the past. It was part of the past. I have some habits that... um, that used to be very strong in my life. <laughs> and now I say, well, even when I catch myself in that same habit, I'll say, I used to do that a lot. Now I seldom do it. You see, I've moved myself from a lot to seldom. One of these days it'll be, gosh, I remember when I used to do that, period. We move as we, as we recognize that's what happens. I recognize and then I move forward and then I recognize again. That's how we're doing this as humanity, but not... Not level. We're moving up. We're moving up. So that's what we get to look at. Do we have an emotional investment in this uh, resisting, uh, uh, in the problem persisting? Do we have an emotional investment in it? And really, if you've got dislikes in your your world and if you've got things going on um, that you're never going to forgive or you're never going to forget, how is that serving you? How is it serving you? Then you get to look at how it's serving you. And you know what? I can almost guarantee you will want to correct your course on it. Because it it harms no one to the degree it harms us to hold on to old resentments, old shame.
remember, this is what we have to remember, that when we have a clear understanding of what it is that is our challenge, what it is that we're calling our problem, and, where we un and then when we understand our relationship to it, Remember, you have a relationship to that problem if you're calling it a problem. Whether you call yourself a victim, an observer, a participant, whatever, you have a relationship with it. So here, when you've, uh, when you've been able to identify it, and you have a clear image of what it is, and you've asked yourself, um, what feelings do I have, and what feeling would I like to have? What could I have? Because it's not only like to have, what feeling could you have? Remember, remember, it's the choice we're making. Then we are opening a space to allow something bigger to emerge. We are allowing a space for a new tendency for our mind to move in. A new tendency to move from. When we have a clear understanding of what it is we're experiencing because we've gone within, we've recognized our part in it, and we've also gotten this idea of what we would like. Like the children who are doing the, the clapping of the hands and the stomping of the feet, we get to do that too. We get to call our joy out. We get to claim it. Just like when the song, we're calling a new, we're singing a new world into existence, we are. That's exactly what we're doing. And we can hum or we can sing Sing, we can play an instrument or we can dance we can do whatever we want in enjoy enjoy and we will bring forth something new for ourselves our health our happiness and our future depends on more on what we tell ourselves more on what we tell ourselves than anything else our health our happiness I would add our prosperity our future depends more on what we're telling ourselves than anything else. Because remember, what you tell you, you also tell you you believe. Why would you say it to you if you didn't believe it? Well, sometimes it takes a lot of convincing, or you think you're doing a lot of convincing, to believe something. But you are on some level believing what you tell yourself. Now, it doesn't mean you don't want to change and you wouldn't be willing to allow it to change, but it means it's your belief at this time. So, now the question is, what would you like to come next? What is it you would like to come next? We've looked at identifying a problem. We've looked at how we participate as long as it's a problem to us, we're participating with it. And we're looking at having a clear understanding of what that participation is. Because from the level of our feelings about what we want next, we'll know, we will know what we're holding on to. From the level of the feelings we have about what we want next. We want something next and, oh gosh, I'd like that, but it's not possible. Go to those feelings. They're telling you something. They're carrying the message for you. I want this. This is what I want next. And I'm ready for it. I go to those feelings and they're just, it's, it's the in field of infinite possibilities. And which way do I want to go? How much am I going to accept? How well, how well? How, how well a receiver am I? The ability to control your experience and have them result in happiness, prosperity, and success lies in our own minds and the way we use our mind. That's what this teaching is about. The use of the mind. Science of mind. So we want to... Flip these stories we've been telling ourselves about the problems that are in front of us. Not to ignore the problem, but flip our perspective of it. What is here for me to know? What is here for me to do? How am I participating? Am I bringing uh, loving energy to this problem? Am I seeing it with a clarity of, of a truth beyond the circumstance? That's expanded thinking, loving, living. And we all have within us 
every single one of us have within us everything we need to be the magnificence that we are. Every single one of us have that within us. It's not something we have to wait for. Buckminster Fuller said this, and it's such a powerful quote. He said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Don't try and change what isn't working. Build a new model that makes this obsolete. And the change will take place. The change will take place. We are right here, right now, today, in the midst of this opportunity to be the loving presence that's needed on this, on, on this planet. We have the opportunity to recognize that that's what we are and that we are joining all the other souls, all the other beautiful people. And all, whether they're awake or asleep, they are still the essence of God out there. So let's join them with intention. Let's join them knowing that humanity experiences joys and, and pain and light and darkness and ups and downs and whatever's in between, but that we recognize and realize and are committed to doing this together, doing this together, <coughs> lifting, moving, being, joining. So I'm going to ask you to join me in this moment. Just allowing the breath of life to freely flow into the body and out. Knowing that within each one of us there is a center of joy, there is a center of peace, there is a center of life, love, goodness. And that on this journey we join with others. And move along a path that sometimes is very familiar and sometimes is very rocky and sometimes is so smooth. But we are always on a path of unfoldment. Because we are singing a new world into existence and the world is within us. We are singing ourselves into a new existence because we can. And because that spark of life draws that from us. A spark that lights the universe. <laughs> and as we allow ourselves to feel the presence of presence of spirit, the presence of God, the presence of Atman, the presence of Wonkan Tonkin, whatever name we call this presence that is forever around us and everywhere present. As we feel this, we realize there's no separation between us. There can't even be a, the most minute separation because it's all it's all one. And so the beauty and the awesomeness and the goodness I know of the world has to be true of me and of you. The very essence of who we are. And knowing that, we also know it's never too late to become more of that essence of beauty and goodness and love 
It's never too late. And it's always possible. And it's always needed. Our soul is calling for a greater expression. And as we stand under the shelter of each other, we also provide shelter for each other. And as we stand in truth, recognizing God as source, God as creator, God as love, May we know ourselves and each other as the holy and whole children of this living God, this loving God, God. And so what is true for us now is true for us forevermore. And we are grateful. And we live from that gratitude of truth. And together we say, and so it is. Amen. Just before you say something you can't take away, take a breath and let it out. Try to think about what would love do now. Wondering if you should cross that line for good. you decide ask yourself from inside of what would love do now everything is either an act of love or a cry for love that's why for love we try for love in the end it's all we know Whether right or wrong Doesn't matter just as long As you let your heart decide Ask yourself from inside What would love do now? long 
As you let your heart decide yourself from inside, what would love do now? As you let your heart decide, ask yourself from inside, what would love do now? Thank you. So we've come to that place in our service where we get to put into action the law of circulation. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary, there's a basket on the back table. For those of you who are joining us online, if you choose to donate, you can go to our website and there you'll find a donate, donate button. So I'd like to ask you now to take your tithe, your gift, your offering, not only in your hand, but in your heart and join me in this prayer of gratitude. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and so it is. So now we want to thank everyone who joined us online. We are glad you could join us today, and we love you, and we hope you come back and join us again. And thank you.